50 quid in the casket. Fair <laughs> income. Hey! It's a lucky day. How about that? Hey, if I'd known that, I'd never have come to work. <laughs> well, that's great, Pike, but let's save the party for later. For now, we ought to work out what's going on here. Now, you were down at the face, Parky. What happened down there? Well, I was boring into the face. I could see a bit of dust blowing out of the hole, so I knew there was a bit of gas in there. Just had no idea how much of it there was. Yeah, well, we weren't too worried. Mainly because we struck a bit of gas the week before. Yeah. I mean, it made it hard to breathe for a while, but nothing serious. Yeah, we, we packed a hole and then blew the charge up. Boy, all hell broke loose. Suddenly I couldn't breathe like someone kicked me ribs in. Must have knocked me out for a bit. Then I woke up. Here I am. Yep, so here we are. Hey, what about Chum Buchanan? Anybody see what happened to him? No. Yeah, he went up to get us a ladder. Hey, get this. He volunteered to go and get it. Hey. Oh, that's a first. He's never volunteered for a thing in his life. <laughs> no, I guess it wasn't his time. And hey, what about Ray? I saw him coming down the mine, told him to run for it. I hope he made it. And I just threw the chain on the horse and I heard, a, I heard the boom, you know, the big bang. And I heard a, one fella, I always think it was Hoppy Shrub, so I don't know who it is, to this day, run for your life. I didn't even hook the horse off, eh? I just took off. And as I was running, my mate Jack Thomas, he was bringing the other load down in the same place. And Jack was a fellow, oh, well, he looked old at that time, but he'd probably be about 40 odd. But he was in the, in the army, and he had half his gut sort of shot off in the, in the wall. But he was my mate, and I took off flat. And they had big doors, say, about 20 foot wide to keep the air in. And there was about three or four of them. I never opened one of them. It was that bigger like that, we just went through. And from A13, I run up to A6. And I was playing football. And I got up at A6, and Jack was about five foot behind me, with half a guts. Oh, <laughs> Jack Thomas, you know, he just, and you couldn't, it was just, uh, your light was like a bloody cigarette light. And I, m I remember running past A10 or whatever it was, I could see men, when they heard the noise, they were coming out to see what happened. And I could just see their lights as I was running past. Well, they died because they run into the gas. I just finished tea and got up from the, from the table and they got the three whistles. And, uh, When you get us three whistles like that, it's a disaster. Well, it's this. Well, there's no use sitting here, boys. What do you say? Head up to the top? Yep. I, I agree, Pike, but first we ought to see if there's anyone out there who still needs help. Who's coming with me? We have just received news of a coal mine explosion at Collinsville, near Bowen in North Queensland. At this stage, it is not known what caused the explosion, 
although mine officials suspect an outburst of gases may have been responsible. Strange. There's no one about at all. All the tunnels are totally deserted. Rescuers at the mine believe there are up to ten men still in the mine. It has not been revealed whether any lives have been lost in the explosion. Okay, we've had a look for the others. I'm going to the top. Who's coming? Yeah. Oh, it hit you that quick you didn't know what was going, what was going on. And you couldn't describe the feeling. Just see how terrible it is. See, men have died one at a time, and you sort of know that that will happen. When you get seven men dying at one time, it's an awful feeling. You don't know how to describe it. Oh, everyone was shocked, you know, but... And it brings home to you, you know, that miners have a right to fight for better conditions. Oh, well, I was at the movies and a few of my mates and that, and uh, oh, about half past six, Davy Harrison owned the picture show at the time, and. I think it was one of, the, one of his nephews, I think, was, uh, got killed. And Parkinson, I think it was. And uh, he turned the lights on. He said, there's been an accident at the mine. He said, uh, well, everyone just kind of run out of the movie show then and come, went straight over to the number one tunnel. And that's when I seen a few of the boys on the laying down in Braddus and that, eh? A couple of fellas they brought up. So you think it was an outburst of black damp? Black damp, carbon dioxide, whatever you want to call it, that's what it was. Never seen an outburst like that, though, for as long as a... So what did you find? Well, we tried heading to the top, but we ended up back here. Well, maybe. I think we should... Three bells. It's truth. Must be serious. That's it for me. I'm gonna try heading out along A9 and then up. There's gotta be some way out of here, boys. Who's with me? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, me too. Hey Mick, you coming? No, you go ahead, I'll wait here. What do you mean, wait here? For what? I've been running up and down these tunnels for most of my life, Jimmy. I think it's time for a break. Hey, Jimmy, before you go, got a smoke? What for? You don't smoke. You never have. Well, today's different. Hey, hell, Mick, what are you doing? Oh, mate, you know the rules? I think it's a bit late for rules, Pete. What? Oh, you go on up. You know where to find me. All right, Mick. Don't work too hard. Let's go. Thirty-eight years. <laughs> 